Freud, I personally find to be one of the most important and interesting characters of the last 100, 150 years. Oh, wow. And, but in my circles that I run in, the, the mathy and sciencey people, he's been really rejected and, and derided by uh, my peers in this mathy, sciencey area, which I think is, is totally wrong. But I haven't yet gotten to talk much about him on the podcast, though I hope to have tens and tens of episodes on, on Freud at some point in the future. But for now, granted, he was he was very interested in mental illness. Does his work or any of your work that you've done on Freud relate at all to the phenomenology of illness? Oh, wow. So interesting. Um, I've got a picture of him right there. Um, I think some of the ideas are easily transported across. For example, the idea of internal conflict, right? Which was, I mean, in some ways, his real revolution is to say, look, we think there is this subject, there is this agent, this, this unified thing, but actually... That's just the result of an internal struggle and conflict between the different agencies of, um, you know, within within the mind. Um, and he uses the metaphor of, of a parliament and saying, you know, it's it's just a what we end up seeing is a majority view or some sort of compromise that we reach. But it's not like, you know, the id is ever satisfied with the the solutions that that. Um, that we see we see expressed as as consciousness or <clears throat> or something like that. So I think the the idea that within us there are different forces that kind of push and pull in different directions um, is is one that could be taken into illness. I'm, I'm only I'm just thinking about it right now because I've never been asked this before. So. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I might not be expressing myself as, as clearly. I think another one might be the significance of sexuality for mental life. Uh, not just, again, not just in adults, but also in, in, in children. Um, and the, the, the potency of, the, of the, the two drives, the sex drives and the death drive that he talked about in his, in his later work, again, are also a way of saying... You know, we are embodied creatures. We are, we are human animals, and and that um, is very significant, I guess, in the case of illness, in in appreciating and understanding our physical vulnerability and our physical limitations. And then I think a third area that I think is one where there is connection is if you think about his um, little essay on transience where he talks about how everything that we value is can be seen as shorn of its worth because of its ephemeral nature, because it's it's passing. He, he talks about a, a rose that, you know, blossoms for only one night. And he says it's no he that rose is no less beautiful than any other flower that would blossom for thousands of years. Um, so that focus on transience on the ephemerality of things is I think a very important piece <clears throat> in the bigger picture of, of the of human beings that I would like to ultimately develop where they're, they're prone to illness, but they're also the, the um, they're also prone to other forms of adversity and affliction. Um, due to, you know, a political situation or a natural disaster. They're also um, subject to to the contingencies and vagaries of life. And I think ultimately Freud and these, you know, reflections on illness and some other bits of work can kind of come together. At least that's what I'm hoping to do in the next few years is to really think about how we are vulnerable, vulnerable, prone to, you know, to, to affliction in, in all sorts of ways and how the contingencies of life, of political life, of geopolitical life, of um, the life of planet Earth are um, control us to a much greater extent than we want to. And, um, you know, 
Freud famously talked about the the uh, the Copernican the third Copernican revolution um which which was his view of psychoanalysis as as a kind of ultimately a kind of humbling um motivation something that will help us see ourselves as not so central as not so um virile as not so powerful as not so in control of what happens to us and i think ultimately that is again another insight that i think freud would share with a phenomenology of illness as i as i see it <laughs>